When it comes to building a home, especially if you are getting to go through a full design center, build out and pick everything, it can be really overwhelming. There are tons of options to pick. Uh, you, you know, you get flooring, tile, ceiling fans, toilets, bricks, stone, kitchens. There's so many things. And if you're not careful, it can get really overwhelming uh, and it can get really expensive. So here's what I want to do today. We're going to talk about the things that you should spend money on when it comes to builder upgrades, a couple things that you should probably avoid and a few that I'm like 50, 50 on depending on circumstances. So let's jump in, talk about the best things to spend money on when building a new construction home. Here we go. So you've found a home that you want to build, you pick the lot uh, and you're really excited because now you're getting to write the contract and you're like, oh my gosh, we've got so many things to do, so many things that are going to come up. Uh, here's a couple things that I think we should definitely consider when it comes to how we spend our budget on our new home. Number one, uh, structural options. This is think like uh, third car garages, fireplaces, outdoor fireplaces, game rooms, all of those things that are going to be almost impossible to change after the fact, uh, I would definitely, if you want them, this is the time to get them. You're not, you know, you're not going to be able to add a third car garage later. You might be able to add a fireplace or an outdoor fireplace or extend your patio. Could be a thing you could do, but honestly, the best money to spend, is, this is why it's number one on my list, is in structural upgrades. So whatever you want to make your home feel like it's yours, to you know, add game rooms, things like that. If you're wanting to add a second floor, if that's an option on your floor plan, these are the things that I think we absolutely have to do at the building phase. Um, so spend your money there. Just be mindful, those are gonna add up really quickly. These are probably gonna be some of your most expensive upgrades outside of you know a lot premium if you have it. These are gonna be some of the most expensive upgrades that you have. Number two on my list, I would consider, kind of goes into the similar as, as structure, uh, high ceilings and larger doors. If your builder comes in and says, hey, our standard ceilings are eight foot high, but in your living room, we can give you 10 or we can give you 12 uh, or we can vault your ceiling. Uh, that's gonna be one of those things that it is beautiful when it's done. It's gonna be costly. Uh, it's gonna you know, run your AC bill up a little bit, but it's gonna be super hard to do after the fact. So if you're wanting higher ceilings in your home, it adds a ton of value. It makes a small space feel big and it makes a big space feel even bigger. Um, so high ceilings is one of those things that I would say, hey, it's definitely worth considering if your builder offers it. Going along with that, eight foot doors, again, getting into those those taller doors, you could, of course, you could do that afterwards. There's a lot that goes into what, you know, cutting and removing door frames and adding door frames. So if they offer you the option for eight foot doors, I would consider it, again, it makes it easier to move in large furniture, and it just gives your home this more elegant, uh, luxurious feel. Those are the kind of things you see on, on higher end homes. And when you can get that uh, from your builder, I think it's definitely worth something to consider adding in as an upgrade. Let's talk kitchens, because I think kitchens are a, a place where we could spend a lot of money and, and you spend a lot of time with you and your family. It's also one of those things that when you think about a resale, kitchens are uh, things that help resell homes. So here's what I would say when it comes to kitchen upgrades, countertops, Undermount sinks, high cabinets. Those are kind of three all rolled in to one and we'll talk about each of them. So uh, if your builder offers a upgrade from a standard countertop, depending on what their standard is, if they can go up on a stone, like if they go up to a quartz or they go up to a, a higher level quartz or they go up to butcher block or whatever, uh, that's something to consider at time of build because what you want is if your countertops are all gonna match, uh, you want them cut and matched accordingly with the stones that they have. And usually they have really great selections when it comes to those stones. Same thing with a sink. If you're thinking, oh, we want a farmhouse sink or we want a undermounted sink or we want a larger sink, whatever it is, if the builder offers an upgrade, it might be worth considering just for the simple fact that, A, especially if you go undermount, you're going to have to have somebody come in and cut that hole in your in your stone to replace that sink. And worst case scenario, they cut it and they break it and then you have to replace it. And trying to replace kitchen slabs and making it match is a hard, hard thing to do. So try, trying to make them match when they have to replace it is going to be hard. Uh, and what I don't want you to do is you have, hey, we have a, a white with a vein in it and on our island, but on the counter to, on the you know back counters, we have different and we broke it, we couldn't match it. 
and now you're bothered by it forever. So uh, have them, you know, replace, if you want the bigger sink or replace the, the sink or go with the undermounted sink or farmhouse sink, whatever, uh, it's an upgrade worth spending money on. And then lastly, we talked about the high cabinet. So this is where they take your cabinets and they take them all the way to the ceiling and either it's an extended cabinet or it gives you like, you know, that ridge sort of cap. For me, this is more of an aesthetic thing than anything. Uh, it also allows you more storage to keep things off your countertops, keep your kitchen clean. But the aesthetics of it are super nice. This is going to be one of those things too. After the fact of closing, the only way you're going to get this is replacing your entire kitchen cabinetry. Um, usually it's not a super expensive upgrade to go from what's there, the standard to going up to the you know full high cabinets to the ceiling. It adds a ton of beauty um, and again, just helps elevate the product that you're buying. So if you're, if you're considering things in the kitchen, those would be the things that I would say, hey, look at those. This one is uh, kind of a unique one if you live in a gas neighborhood. So if your kitchen range and stuff is gas, one of the upgrades that I would consider asking about is an additional gas line on your patio. Think about it. Uh, if you're somebody that likes to grill or cook out or you know, you've got a, a flat top and you're tired of buying propane tanks, having to change out tanks, refill them, or you want a fire pit because you just want to hang out outside, whatever it is, having them add a gas line drop if you're in a gas community on your back patio is a valuable upgrade because then you can buy the inverter or converter uh, and convert all of your grills to a gas line and then it's just totally tied to your gas bill. You don't have to worry about keeping propane tanks anymore. Side note that goes with that, if you're thinking about an outdoor kitchen, uh, ask for a hot water bib in your backyard. Uh, mo you know, most of them are just going to be your standard, you know, straight cold water. But if you can get a hot water bib tied close to a gas line, and even if you don't build the kitchen right away, that's a helpful expansion piece uh, down the line when you're thinking about those outdoor kitchen spaces. The front of your house, uh, or known as the elevation, I think this is a place again where you spend money. Uh, when you're looking through the builder's catalogs, like, hey, hey, here's the floor plan, and there's six different elevations that we can build on this house. You know, this is the curb appeal. This is that money shot uh, when people are walking up to your home or they're driving down your street. This is what makes it look a certain way. Uh, again, kind of like your structural options, this is the one that tends to be rather expensive because you're changing facade and then of course picking brick and stone that go with that full disclosure one of the hardest things to pick is brick because they're going to show it to you on a little like basically looks like a piece of paper and you're like oh i think i like this and you forget that they're going to deliver like four to six pallets of that and you're like oh this doesn't look the way i thought it did so brick and stone uh, if you're wanting to put you know stone on the facade this is the place where i would say hey Consider this upgrade because again, you're not gonna be able to make that change to a to the elevation. So if you're like, man, I really wanted a J swinging garage where my garage isn't on the face, the only way to get that is an elevation change. You need to spend the money to do that now. Let's talk about your bathroom. And here's the things I think that are kind of important when it comes to spending money. And, and you're talking about upgrades and the builder offers it and you're in your design center. A couple things I would consider, um, one, is a free, if you have a separate tub and shower combo uh, in your primary bathroom, I would consider if it's an option, upgrading to a freestanding tub. Uh, this kind of, again, it makes it look a little bit more luxurious. It gives it a nicer feel, very spa-like. Also makes it easier to change out that tub after the fact if you decide, hey, we want a different tub or we want to do something different, whatever. I would say uh, freestanding tub is a upgrade that's worth it uh, for A, for you to live in, but B, for the resale value, it's totally there. Uh, second thing in the bathroom that a lot of people don't consider is if you, so now again, primary bathroom, you have a shower enclosure. Uh, most of the time the tile stops right above where the shower head is. I would say, ask, ask your builder, uh, take my tile all the way to my ceiling, whatever it is in the shower, I want to take the tile all the way up. What this does is it removes all of that sheetrock and it tiles it all the way up so that it's, it's waterproof on the off chance you're splashing water on your ceiling or whatever. And again, it just helps elevate the look of your bathroom, gives it that nice spa retreat feel when you take that tile all the way to the ceiling. One thing that people don't realize that they can do, and you can't do this with every builder in your secondary bathrooms, because most of the time in your secondary bathroom, what you're gonna get is a, you know, a drop-in traditional shower kit. You can ask to have that removed and it be just a flat walk-in tiled shower. If you have older kids um, and you're like, oh, we really don't need tubs anymore, or you are thinking about you know, the long term of maybe you're moving in parents or you're potentially getting older and you're like, hey, I just don't wanna have to step in and out of the tub. You can ask to have those shower or to have those tubs upgraded to just flat showers. Um, they're gonna charge you for it. 
Uh, I was talking with a builder actually last week about doing this with some clients and they're like, oh yeah, it's $1,500. That guys, that's nothing compared to what a, you know, a plumber and a, a, is going to charge you to come in and do that after the fact. So again, there's some upgrades that I think definitely worth it. That's one of those ones for me. Uh, secret one that a lot, a lot of people talk about upgrade your toilet. If they give you just those traditional, you know, small round toilet, sometimes you have the option to go to an elevated toilet. Uh, or a longer toilet. You know, again, it's it's one of those things. It's such a such a minor thing, but it makes a difference for a for resale, b for looks, and c ultimately for comfort. Those are things. If I was spending money in bathrooms, upgrading a home, that I would look at. We've talked bathrooms. We've talked structural upgrades. We've talked kitchen. Let's talk electricity because uh, I think this is one. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about a, a thing that I would say do, and then we're going to come back to this in a minute and kind of talk about some things that I wouldn't do when it comes to electricity. So electricity, this is where you need to think about every place in your house that you want plugs. If you're thinking of mounting TVs on walls and you don't want cords, we want plugs there. If you're thinking, hey, I want to be able to plug in Christmas lights. Well, we need uh, plugs in the eaves or under the soffit, right? Hey, I want to be able to, to put my toaster in the the pantry because I don't want anything on my counter. Okay, well, we need a plug there. I want, you know, you name it. I want to plug my Dyson in in the laundry room and I want to mount it on the wall. We want a plug there. Plugs are so cheap, uh, especially when there's no drywall, right? Especially when you can mark them on the on ahead of time and get all the plugs everywhere you think you want them uh, and they don't have to cut in drywall and they just exist. You know, you think about that, you think about, hey, I want lights on three-way switches, right? So I want a switch that turns on the kitchen over here, but I also want it to turn off over here Ask about those three-way switches. They make a huge difference. Again, plugs, uh, Wi-Fi spots, or if you're mounting TVs, do you want ethernet connections above those? Where do you want your internet to come into your home? A lot of these new builders are doing the like big cabinetry pieces in the laundry rooms or master closets. If they offer that, take it. Uh, it is a huge upgrade to be able to get all of your networking capabilities into one space. Speaking of networking capabilities, ask your builder what kind of cat cable they're running. Are they still running cat five or have they upgraded to cat six? If you can get an upgrade to cat six, that is going to help future proof your home. As internet speeds get better and we get more and more communities that have gig and fiber and things beyond that, what you want to do is future proof your home for the ability to have faster internet speeds. And again, when the walls are open and there's nothing there, those are the kind of things that are easy to do. So we've talked about Wi-Fi, we've talked about Cat6, uh, Christmas light plugs, uh, down, oh, down lights. If you, you know, you see the homes that have the lights in the, the like soffits or the eaves that, that light the gables, if you want those, have those done the design center. If you're thinking about buying an electric vehicle or you have heavy machinery, add those 220 plugs in your garage. Again, they're gonna be cheaper to do with the builder than getting an electrician out after the fact. So those are things that I would spend a, a lot of time in electrical spaces, making my house exactly the way I want it to be. Also, pro tip, you can have, and we did this in our home, uh, and this will be on our list of things that I wouldn't spend money on. You can add light spaces without actually adding the light. Well, what do you mean by that? So we wanted uh, pendant lights over our island, but I didn't like any of the choices of lights that they had. So all we did, we asked our builder, hey, can you wire all of those pendant lights and then cap them? And I'll put in my own light after the fact. So you can add that in as well when it comes to electrical. Now let's get into the things that are a little bit more maybe obscure that you wouldn't know to ask about uh, when it comes to building. So uh, first one I think is obscure is some attic decking. So if you have a attic or you have a two story and it's a walkout attic, they're gonna give you the bare minimum of decking to get you to your air handler and back. Um, if you're thinking about using that for storage space, if they will deck it for you, like if you can ask for it to be decked, that is adds a ton of space for storage, of usable storage, that way you can store things in your attic. Uh, while we're up in the attic, also ask about if you're not already getting it standard, radiant barriers and spray foam insulation. Those are those things that you're like, oh, I didn't even know that I had them, um, but they make a difference when you have them because they help, especially here in Texas, um, help keep your home cool in the summer and warm in the winter, uh, make a difference for your energy efficiency, keep your home quieter uh, so that you don't hear as much noise, that you don't hear as much from your neighbors. So spray home insulation, radiant decking, and decking out your attic so that you can do uh, storage. If your home is a uh, wider footprint, right? So if you're thinking about, oh, uh, we're building on a 50, 60, 70, whatever foot lot, and your home has a very wide floor plan, 
one of the things you might consider asking about is, and we did this because our house is like 62, it's wider, more wide than it is deep. So we asked for a second air return. So there's an air return that covers one side of our house. And then there's another air return uh, right by our master bedroom, helps with airflow, helps regulate again as somebody who likes to keep my house cold all the time. And my wife hates it. Sorry, babe. The second air return made it, it was a, it was a minor tweak. It was easy to add while we were building. That's made a big difference um, in our home. And then last two things that I would say, hey, these are things that I would definitely consider spending money on when it comes to my new construction home is additional concrete flat work, which means, hey, you wanna add you know, more to the patio or you want some additional driveway spot or you want a trash can space. It's going to be cheaper to buy that from the builder when they already have the concrete truck out here than trying to do that post-closing. It also means if you have a sprinkler system, which most new builds in Texas do, you're not having to worry about coming back in capping sprinkler lines, moving, re, you know, regrading your yard because they're gonna account for that in their site plan. So if you want additional concrete, uh, you're you know, extending the patio and you're like, hey, well, we're gonna put a cover on it later. We don't want you to cover it. That's a great idea. Just add the, add the flat work now because it's gonna be cheaper to do with the builder. Second thing I would say is outside, uh, I would also ask about additional fencing. Can you pull your fence all the way forward on your lot to air as far forward as you can? Can you add some more on the side we pulled ours forward. I think when we bought our house, I asked our builder for an additional 70 or 80 feet and they quoted me way cheaper than what I could find post-closing. And the idea was I wanted, uh, A, I wanted my air conditioning unit behind my fence because I didn't want anybody messing with it, but B, I wanted to recapture some of my side yard. So if you can do that during the build process where they will give you that fence, again, concept of like, hey, they're already coming out and doing it. They can typically do it cheaper than what it would cost you to be post-close and it all, you're guaranteed that it's all gonna match. That is how I would spend money uh, when it comes to design on build job. Okay, so we've talked about all the things that, that are great upgrades, great things to spend money on. Let's talk about things that are money suckers that like you should probably not spend your money on when you're designing and building a new construction home. Number one for me uh, is light fixtures. Honestly, I would stick with the standard. Most of the time, builder light fixtures are ugly. And the ones that they have to upgrade are expensive. It's easy to change light fixture after the fact. You can find it cheaper. They can be changed. I have electricians that can change them for you for cheaper. So I would say, hey, give me the standard light fixture everywhere, standard, you know, all of that. And then I would go find the light fixtures that I want, you know, Ikea, Wayfair, Amazon, Lowe's, whatever. Um, that's easy to do post closing is find your own light fixtures. Uh, same thing like we were talking about earlier with the pendant lights, like we wanted pendant lights, but none of the ones that the builder had were nice. Thought they were all ugly. So just have them wire for it and then ask them, I don't know if you're like us, uh, we believe every room should have a ceiling fan. Uh, even if you don't put a ceiling fan in with the builder, ask them to block and wire for a ceiling fan and just say, hey, so after the fact, if I've changed my mind, I can go in and put in a ceiling fan or I can put in a, a pendant light, whatever, um, or also, block and wire ceiling fan outside on your patio. You're gonna want that for the Texas heat. But don't spend money upgrading your light fixtures with the builder. Second thing I would say don't spend money on with the builder um, is tons of paint colors. Some builders just won't, they, truthfully, they won't do it. They'll say, hey, this is your color that we're gonna paint your house and that's fine. Others will be like, oh yeah, we can paint an accent wall and we can do all these different things. It's going to be expensive. Wouldn't spend the money on it. Uh, you can do it post-close. Uh, you can hire somebody again, or you can you know do it yourself while your home is empty. Painting accent walls and feature walls and things like that is a relatively inexpensive thing for you to do. It's where builders make money on margin to, to get it done from you. So I would avoid spending money on paint. The, the next two, uh, kind of similar, but a little bit different, uh, door handles and faucets and fixtures, right? Most of the time, again, it's the same as the light fixtures. I would say the builder's door handles, they're not gonna have a ton of selections. They'll have a few, but again, those can be changed out later. Once you know what you want, you can do those relatively easy, um, unless you're just totally in love with one that they have. Same thing goes for like sink faucets and bathrooms, kitchen kitchen faucets, towel racks, toilet paper holders, all of those things. They're, the selections most of the time 
are going to be minimal. And I think you can find better options for cheaper. Unless again, there's just one that you're just like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love this particular shower head. And it does the exact thing that I, I mean, whatever, if you like it, get it. But most of the time, those are fairly easy to change out after the fact. But I would say just be mindful, especially if you're thinking about kitchen, kitchen faucets. Um, if you want one that's, you know, the uniform U, and it's only going to have one hole cut in it. Uh, make sure that when they cut your countertop that you only have a faucet that has one hole, not the three hole standard cut, because otherwise you're gonna have to fill in those holes in your, your countertops. That's not gonna be pretty. Uh, so I would not spend money on bathroom water fixtures and door handles. I would figure that out post closing. And lastly, this one for me, honestly, is a 50 50. I go back and forth on this and it's flooring. If you find flooring in the builder's catalog that you love and you're like, we're sticking with it, get it right. If you think, Hey, we might rip this up or change it. Just stick with the standard carpet. Just say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And we'll get flooring put in after the fact, because again, a lot of times you may find selections that you're like, Oh, we like this, but we don't love it. That was kind of like for us, what we found in our bathrooms was the builder at the time did not have a tile that we just absolutely were in love with in the bathroom. So I'm like, well, I don't really want to spend the money to upgrade to something that I kind of like when I know what I really want and I can tear it out later. Um, so flooring is 50, 50 for me. If you know for sure what you want, sure. Upgrade your flooring. Uh, definitely. If you're going to keep the carpet, upgrade the pad, give it some cushion, maybe upgrade to a little finer carpet. If you're going to keep it, if you're not for sure what you're going to do, it may be best to just wait and figure it out post closing. That, that's just kind of personal opinion. So, Hey, I know we covered uh, a lot in this video. Maybe it actually probably should have been two videos. I don't know, but Here's what I will tell you. Uh, I do a lot of new construction deals here in DFW. I'm here to be an advocate and assistant to you on your contract to walk you through your build job or get you into a, a quick close new construction home. If I can help in any way, my contact information is going to be literally right down here. Uh, feel free to send me an email, send me a text, whatever's easiest for you. Um, if you want to browse homes and like just see, hey, what's available in the new construction space that could close quickly, there's a link down in the description. I promise I'm not going to sell your data like Zillow does. I promise I'm not going to bombard you. I just, again, want to be a resource and be an advocate any way I can. And then of course, lastly, if you would like, Hey, we just need to have a conversation. I have a thousand things swirling around in my head and I don't know where to start. You can book some time in my calendar down below guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite upgrade. If you built a home, favorite thing that you spent money on in your upgrade or something that you're like, man, I wish I would have known to spend money on that. Again, thank you guys for watching this video. We'll see you in our next one. Bye for now.